This is a piece together PC I am trying to make work so my girlfriend and I can game together. All major components were known working in other systems, and when I combine them, it doesn't even attempt to boot. It has a brand new SSD attached with no OS installed yet. The disk drives and hard disk drive are just leftovers in this old case I am using. Please, I am at my wit's end and just want to be able to play some Minecraft with my partner. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC, and uh... We are gonna try to fix it. I know some of you are judging this book by its cover and that's totally not doing it justice because there's actually a decent set of entry level components in here, including a Ryzen 5 3600 and RX 5500 XT. It's even got a 550 watt semi-modular Cooler Master power supply and a fairly modern motherboard. It's really just the case that makes things seem older than they are. This is an old thermal take chassis, heck with five and a quarter inch drive bays up top. You can tell that it's just not a premium modern chassis. So that's something we're actually going to fix in this video, but otherwise, this is a fairly balanced entry-level rig. But a fairly balanced entry-level rig might as well be one giant paperweight if it can't even power on. I know this is going to sound a bit harsh, but I actually prefer PCs like these that refuse to power on outright. In my experience, this indicates more than likely a hardware-related issue, and those are just so much easier to troubleshoot, in my opinion, than their software counterparts, or the scenarios where you have intermittent issues, right, where you have like infrequent blue screens of death, or sometimes the system posts and sometimes it doesn't. This should actually be a quick one, and I'm excited about it. The owner also told me off camera that the graphics card and the power supply were both tested in different systems and confirmed working. Of course, we'll have to confirm that for ourselves as well, but that's a great starting point. All right, are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. My extension cable is just long enough to reach up top here. We've got this connected to power, and we're gonna try to get some sign of life from this rig, although I'm not expecting anything to happen just based on what the viewer told me, which is why I don't have a portable monitor here. So power at the rear and power up front. Yeah. Uh, this thing is dead as a box of rocks. In these instances, I always like to start from the most obvious and work our way down the chain. So I know power from the wall is good. We can follow this all the way to my power strip. You can see that is in the on position and we can follow this cable, which is connected all the way up to the power supply here, which is also in the on position. We get no reaction from the system when pushing the power button, but I'm curious if this button actually works. It is an older case. I'm also curious if this is wired up correctly. So he's actually got stuff wired toward the middle of the board, but I think, I actually think this is the wrong place. So, uh, oh yeah, this, this is definitely not for the front panel. This looks like a USB header on a motherboard. Is it really that simple then? You can see this header here, way off to the right is JFP1. This is where your front panel cables need to be connected with the power LED being the top left two pins, power switch being the top right two. I bet all we need to do is transfer these cables over here and we'll probably have a working system. In you go. This is it then. All we need to do is power it on with the monitor connected. Now, I, I expect we'll get a post. Pretty, uh, pretty easy fix. Would you look at that? So uh, as far as I'm aware, this is the first time this combination of hardware has ever worked. And I think it ultimately just came down to front IO wiring, which, um. It's not the first time we've come across this, especially since the USB pins tend to look very similar, those headers. Uh, so just be very careful. We have a dedicated video on this. Try to look for JFP1, and if you've any doubt at all, be sure to refer to your motherboard's manual. And sure enough, this is a post. Now we don't have Windows loaded on the storage drive in question. Again, this is a brand new build, even though it's got used components in it. Uh, and the owner told me he wanted to take care of the OS installation himself. So we're gonna leave this exactly the way it is. Um, mission accomplished, even though we didn't have to do all that much, but there is still one glaring issue with this rig that I wanna tackle, and that is the case. You probably noticed the lackluster cable management, and it's not really a reflection of the owner. The case just doesn't allow for any storage of cables really anywhere. It just all has to hang in front of the motherboard here, which looks extremely tacky. So the new case is definitely gonna clean that up. Also, if you're concerned about the five and a quarter inch drive base, he says he doesn't use those himself. He doesn't need them in the rig for his girlfriend, but he wants to repurpose them 
uh, and uh, give them to a friend. So we're going to leave those in the old case, but everything else in here will be recycling in the new one. Speaking of, let's go ahead and bring it out. Ooh la la, the Peerbase 500. FX from Be Quiet is an iteration of the 500DX mid-tower that I so deeply love for how compact it is. It has great airflow and comes with great fans. This one actually adds tasteful RGB as well. So it's going to definitely spice things up a bit, make things feel more modern with his frankly, modern hardware, at least with respect to the case he was originally using. This 500FX comes with one 140mm Lightwings fan at the rear for exhaust, and a whopping three 120s at the front. All of these RGB capable, that's four fans in one case. You even get things like sound damping foam in here. The 500FX alone is going to transform this viewer's rig. I cannot wait to see how it all turns out. You can learn more about this by the link in the video description, and I want to thank Be Quiet for being a continued product sponsor of our fix or flop playlist. To get started then, we'll need to gut this original system from the ground up. Almost everything needs to come out of here. This is actually an X570 motherboard, and uh, it's a bit beefy for 3600, but it can provide a decent upgrade path on a budget in the future. It has an integrated backplate, so we can go ahead and throw this straight into our new case. Get everything wired up back here with this included fan hub. Power supply is going in. Pretty basic setup here. Only one modular cable actually connected along with the 24 pin and the CPU 8 pin. I really like how clean this is already looking. 24 pin taken care of. Tidying up some cable management, just a few zip ties and uh, looks pretty good. We've got this last cable here for, you know what? The graphics card going in right now. This is uh, an interesting 5500 XT. I've not seen this brand before, or worked with it directly. There we go. And there goes supplemental power. And uh, I think, I think that's it. That seemed oddly suspiciously fast. There actually is one cable we haven't connected and that is the SATA power cable for the fan and RGB hub in this case. Unfortunately, the power supply, though it is semi-modular, uh, didn't have a uh, SATA power cable connected when the system was dropped off. I imagine he has it on hand, uh, so this shouldn't be difficult to connect himself. But what I'm gonna do is run a, an external power supply so that we can get this powered up so you can at least see what everything looks like with the fans lit and spinning. I've got like a million different wires running behind here. You can't see them, thankfully, because it's a mess. Oh, yeah, and that was, that was my power supply for the RGB, okay. Welcome to fix or flop. Okay, I'm just gonna power this on first. And now oh, would you look at that? The fans are already on. And now for the remainder of the system. Yes, okay, that's a good sign. Oh, yeah, you know, that would uh, that would probably help. Also powering on the monitor. For some reason that came unplugged. This is just a disaster of a scene. Uh, I'm going to power off and power back on one more time because it might not have seen the monitor as a source since uh, it wasn't technically on. So I think now we'll have something, I, I hope. Oh, that's a good sign. Yes, there it is, okay. Whew, boy, oh boy, that was um, more difficult than it needed to be. And remember, we don't need to worry about Windows. That will be taken care of at the owner's request. Well, this has been a relatively short video then. Um, I suppose it was the best case scenario, right? Just a wiring issue. There was no need to replace any hardware, although I'm definitely glad we swapped out the case. It just fits the internal components now so much better, totally revamps the look of this rig. Rewiring took all of about five seconds. Just remember, whether you're building your first system or your 10th or your 100th, always confirm where the JFP1 pin set is, typically on an ATX board or an MATX board in this orientation here, it's gonna be near the bottom right side of the board. So look for that. If for whatever reason you can't find the labeling on the board, or maybe you're working with an ITX board and due to size constraints, that pinout is somewhere different, somewhere in the middle of the board or on the bottom left, just confirm with your motherboard's manual. You can even look it up online. You'd rather be safe than sorry, right? And I mean, look at it through this viewer's lens. He thought it was either his CPU or his motherboard because he had, in his mind, tested the graphics card and the power supply. It couldn't possibly be something as simple as wiring, right? I mean, you've done it dozens of times. How could it be something that simple? But I can tell you from experience, it often is. <laughs> so, um, you know, you could trust yourself, trust the process, the repetition, just how mundane it can be to wire things up in a rig, but 
it can be the problem. So don't overlook it if you're trying to troubleshoot yourself. If you're watching this video and you're super confident in your work, just do the due diligence. It takes literally like two seconds to confirm you've connected things where they need to be. So um, yeah, that's about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not already. And be sure to check out the 500FX linked below if you're interested. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.